Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics. Now today, of course, is another trial video. This is actually Veteran Hellra Citadel. We are going to show the whole trial, including both sides of the map, because there's a split section in the middle of it, as I'm sure some of you are aware of. And of course, we're going to demonstrate the hard mode as well. Everything is going to be intact, the ad pulls, the bosses, both sides, the lot. Everything is going to be shown from a stam DPS perspective, but there are Magicka and Stamina DPSs in the group. Plus, we've got some very strong... Uh, healers alongside some really tanky tanks giving us lots of damage shields and mitigation as well. So here we go When you first come in you cross the bridge It's quite a long run and then you are presented with many many ads that spawn out of the ground now Here's a pro tip for you here if your horse does not have max stamina in terms of your actual horse upgrades Get off your horse because if these knock you down There is no way to break CC You just have to ride it out for the three seconds that you're on the ground and you'll most likely die So everybody run together get off your horse if you have to and hide behind this little pillar here The reason you hide behind it is because the tanks need to be able to put everything in and most of the enemies are actually ranged So they'll sit at their maximum range and just fire at you from there You want them all to come in so everybody hides behind the pillar They run up the stairs trying to look for you and the tanks can pull them in from there there's a few melees, not too many, but above all, you just want to keep as much air of effect damage down as possible while focusing whichever is closest. Now, there are two sides to this. There's some on the right and there's some on the left, so we've got two tanks pulling everything in. If you can help it, try not to use your ultimates too much, unless they're very, very cheap ones, because you will need them for the next pull. So, again, once these are all finished, we're obviously going to go straight ahead, and there are four War Priests and some more of these adds. They're basically exactly the same stuff. Really, really low health, but the War Priests have got a bit of chunk to them. They're quite strong. They don't hit very hard, but they do snare, and they do have some nasty heavy attacks that will knock you down. So the tanks need to grab them quite quickly. If you're a DPS or a healer and one of the War Priests is going to heavy attack you, don't panic. Don't run away. Just block. You will be just fine. But essentially, you want to get these in the middle, stack them all together, and drop your ulties as and when you feel like. They're not a major, major threat, so if you do want to pace it, especially if you've got low DPS in your group, they will be absolutely fine as long as they are controlled. As you can see, they all go down fairly uh, passively together. The adds aren't too much of a problem because most of the AoE in this particular group is covered, so you should be fine again, but if you are lacking AoE, don't worry. If you have got to go from one to the other and single target them, that's absolutely fine. Next up, of course, is five Flame Shapers. Now, these are evil. Your tanks need to be very, very good at working together here to manipulate their range. But you must, as a group, interrupt any of them that put their hand up in the air and fire comes out. Because otherwise, they will fire off fireballs in random directions at multiple members of the group and nuke them out really quickly. So you must always interrupt these. This is your little breadcrumbs moment where it's leading up to what you need to do later. These are very important. Stack them up, burn them down, make sure the interrupts are very frequent. If you can't manage that, you're going to really struggle on the right side boss when it comes up to that point. Now this first boss is very, very simple, but people make a massive mess of it. The main tank is going to tank the boss turned away from the group just onto the left, and the off tank is going to grab the three as and hold them under the boss. It's going to make sure they're turned away from the group so we don't get nuked. Now, do not stack. You can soft stack like we're doing now, where we all have our own space, but do not stack on top of each other, because players will get individual wins that will do damage over time, and if you stack up, two of you might have have one each, and they're going to multiply, and then you're going to die very, very fast. So have your own space. You'll notice that for the majority of the time, no one is moving their feet. The tank is manipulating the ads, of course, and we're getting pushed a little bit, but that's it. So stay where you are, plant your feet, trust your healers, keep your buffs up, Keep the damage shields coming from the tank. As you can see, our off, shield, off tank is putting on lots of igneous shields and bone shields and such. And our healers are being helped by the stamina DPS. Every time a wind comes out and stacks underneath somebody's feet, I'm calling for all staminas to throw out quick vigor. That actually helps us stand still. As you can see there, I've got two overlapping. That's what happens if two people stay together. Be very, very careful of that. In the meantime, it's basically stack and burn. Now, from the tank's perspective, the main tank, you will have to block his heavy attacks. When he puts his swords together, like he just did there, you can actually interrupt it so that he doesn't throw the swords across the room. But again, we've got so many heals right now that we can actually manage it anyway. Now, the very important part, apart from standing still, which is discipline, you must stand still as a group and keep those heals coming. At 30% health, he's going to do a wicked spin and everyone must get out of the way. So as a group, just before it hits the 30%, everybody move back together nobody stand on anybody 
keep the vigors up just to help the healers, keep the heals coming, keep the damage shields from the tanks coming, and get back. As you notice there, nobody is on each other's feet, but everybody moved backwards. Also, as I'm sure you could see there, I could still reach from the edge of the circle. Melee range can still reach on the edges because he has a huge, huge hitbox. But again, stick to the mechanics. Don't get execute panic. Don't start doing something different just because he's low health. Stay away when he's going to do the spin and the rest of the time, plant your feet. Again, this is a very well used tactic within this particular group. Every time a big mechanic comes in, I'm calling for all the staminas to throw out a quick vigor. Just a sneaky animation cancelled vigor. Stacking up will actually help your entire group. It's a lot more powerful than you might think. Now, there's two sides here, left side and right side. Now, I know a lot of people say it's stamina and magicka. Not necessarily. What you can do is basically take whoever you want on either side and just make sure you utilize their um, skills to your main advantage, of course. Now, we are going left on this demonstration, then I'm going to show the right side. They are both very different bosses. Um, you have a tank and a healer on both sides, and we have four DPS on both sides. As you can see, we do have magicka DPS on this side. It doesn't really matter. Now, this first part, of course, while we're here, and the other group are off doing their adventures on another side, they are going to spawn lots and lots of ads. Now, you just kill them, and kill them, and kill them on repeat, until the other team has opened the gate. There is a switch on the other side, which I'll demonstrate later. Or, you can just grab the one remaining ad after killing all the rest of them, and just hug it in the corner until it's ready. And then they won't need to respawn, but the choice is yours. Essentially, we just kill stuff over and over and over, build up some ultimate, and wait for the gate to be opened. As soon as it is open, we all have to go in together, but the tank should go first. Because when you do go through the gate, you are going to be greeted with a gargoyle. Now these have very simple yet deadly mechanics. Basically the tank needs to turn it away from the group, and the gargoyle will do lots of little light attacks and then breathe in the direction of whoever's got aggro, depending on which way they're facing it. It will turn them to stone and they need to break free. Now, after two breaths, it will slam the ground like hell, and anyone caught inside it will die. So after this second breath, everybody must get out if that isn't dead. And then just range it until he's finished having his little fit. As you can see, there's loads of oil being thrown down. You just need to avoid those. They're not too bad, but as long as you keep up a vigor or a heal from your healer, you should be fine. Now we get a second gargoyle. Same rules apply. You can drop your ulties on it if you really want to, since you're going to be building ultimate for the next room anyway. But two breaths... Then he's going to slam every single time. And then when he's finished the slam, he'll repeat the mechanics over and over and over. Two breaths, then slam. If he's not dead by the second breath, get away from him. Now into the room where the boss is going to swarm. We've got several waves of ads here and you're going to be greeted by some new enemies. We're going to see some Welwars and these are very important towards the, uh, the actual mechanics for the fight that we're going to be presented with. Now... What you need to do with the Welwars, apart from the tank obviously taunting them and bringing them in and the DPS killing them, is do not ever stand behind their back legs because they will donkey kick you in the face and they will kill you. So be very aware of that. Never stand behind a Welwar. Now the war priests or melee target types need to be pulled in as soon as possible. If they can't be chained, just taunt them, they'll come to you. Now, as a tank, you should know that melee targets will obviously run straight to you if, if you've got aggro, but range targets will not. They will only come to you if you are out of their range and they can't reach you while you've got aggro. And that's very important for the flame shaper pull, which we'll see in a moment. There's another pull of Welwars with some more melee guys in here. You have to be very careful as a tank. Make sure you pull them in as soon as possible. Watch the destroyer is turned away from the group because otherwise he's got a nasty cone effect which can knock down the group. As you saw then, the Welwar, before he got knocked down, the armored one, actually had a conal effect behind his back legs. That is the kick. You don't want to get caught by that. So hold these all together, control them as much as you can as a tank, keep the heals coming as the healer, and do as much area of effect damage as you can while focusing the bigger targets. It's a very simple pull. Again, I would try to save your ultimates for this because you are going to need them in a moment. This can be a little bit tricky, and if people are not on interrupts or if the tank isn't capable of manipulating range, this can be a bit of a problem. So, pace your resources on this, you're going to need them. The next pull on the right hand side of my screen, as you can see what this pillar is, there's a flame shaper. The tank needs to taunt this as soon as possible, as you can see it already did, and run up the stairs that we came down in the first place. This will position one flame shaper on top of the other, because he's having to chase the tank to get into aggro range or into damage range for him. Now. This is where you must focus. The Welwars are dying quite quickly with Air of Effect, yes, but you do need to focus down the Flame Shapers. 
decide which target you're going to pick first. But above all, your group must pay attention to interrupts. It's not just on the tank. As soon as they put their hand in the air and flames come out like that, you must interrupt. Bash, long range interrupt, close range interrupt, doesn't make a difference. Make sure you do it. Otherwise, you are in trouble. Now, this boss is pretty straightforward, but people can make a mess of it. You've got two options. You can hold the boss where he is and hold the well while on top of him. Remember, he's a ranged target, however, so he will run around a bit and he will just be a bit awkward to taunt. He won't always come to you. Or you can get your tank to hold the Wellwars to one side and you just go hell for leather on the boss. What we've done is we've decided to stack the Wellwars on the boss so we can passively burn them down with air of effect. Why is this important? Well, the Wellwars will enrage. When they're enraged, they've got very low health, but they are extremely strong and it's really high pressure on the tank. So you want to make sure that you get them down when that happens. When they do, the boss will run back over to them, resurrect them, and then carry on again. So what you really want to do is you can see the enraged one there. We just try and get him down passively while keeping the boss on him. As soon as he dies, he'll be resurrected. Because the boss is going to be running around so much to try and keep picking them up again, it becomes really awkward to apply your damage. So it makes a lot more sense if you stack these on the boss so when he has to res stuff, he's already there. But during the fight, he will run off occasionally, and that's why you want to save your ultimates. Whenever he stops running, drop your ultimates. The rest of the time, pace it until he runs off again, and then drop him again. Now, the longer the fight, the more well wars you will get, and every time he throws down that flame circle that he does on the floor, that's when you want to focus your heals. It's not that stressful. Even as a vampire, you won't take much damage, but you do want to keep those passive heals up. If the tank can hold on to the Wellwars and the boss at the same time, it's going to be a very easy ride for you. If not, you might want to manipulate the mechanics a little bit and hold on to just those and leave the boss to do his business. Now, again, be very, very careful of your positioning. You do not want to stand behind a Wellwar because they will kick you in the face. So focus the boss as much as possible. If you have a low DPS group and you are struggling, then you may want to focus the Wellwars a little bit more just to keep them... Uh, passively kind of dead if you like within kind of res mechanics so that the tank gets an easier ride because it can be very very stressful you can see there he's enraged knock him down boss revives him all that time the boss is standing still next to the world was is just free time for us to burn him now the like i said the longer the fight the more stressful this will get and the tank can end up with five or six of those so you want to make sure that you apply your mechanics very very clean don't run around the room like a headless chicken. Don't waste unnecessary ultimates when the boss is running away and all that good stuff. You want to make sure that you do focus. And your tank should always follow wherever the boss goes next with the adds intact. Now during this time, of course, the other team are dealing with another boss. So we've got our small group over here and they've got their small group over there. As long as you don't fail, the bosses won't enrage and reset. But if you do, they will. So we're now going to see the other side. We're going to see the other side of the uh, the trial and see what they saw while we were killing that boss and killing all those ads. So when you first come through the door, you've got a destroyer and a couple of ads. They're not too difficult, but the tank obviously needs to turn it away from the group because he does have a nasty AoE effect. But you need to get this down as quick as possible and the ads as well. If you've got someone who's really, really sneaky, of course, you can just run up and press the button. Failing that, if you are just doing it passively and just sticking to the rules, you can, of course, kill these first and then run up and press the button. But the longer you take, the longer the other team are down there killing all those adds over and over and over three respawns until this gate is open. As you can see, fire there just opened the door. The other team just now went through the gate and now they're fighting gargoyles. Now, this pool here can be quite tricky. It's not that hard to deal with, but of course, they can run a bit wild when they come down the stairs. So your tank does need to get here quite quickly. If you're not there on time, he will start running around the room and the destroyer starts giving everyone nasty AoE effects, which can knock them down and push them off the cliff. So be very careful there. There's another button further up as well, which is the gate after the gargoyles. We killed two gargoyles and the gate was open behind us. This is why, because this team here is running up to this section and pressing this button. As you can see, fire behind us just now opened that one up. Now we're going to get a big wave of ads. These are the catapults that are throwing out all those nasty uh, trebuchet type shots or the, the rocks or meteors or whatever you want to call them to the other team. So we need to burn these down as quickly as possible while focusing, of course, the main targets. All the smaller ones can be interrupted and or killed, but you do want to focus on the destroyers and turn them away from the group. Keep your heals up, keep your damage shields up and protect the group. When you get up to here, you are going to be greeted with a couple of gargoyles. 
So you will need to deal with these exactly the same way as before, but all these catapults are manned by ads. If you kill the ads, the catapults don't work anymore, and your team on the other side is in a safer position. So they don't have to deal with being peppered by uh, rocks all day long. But same rules apply for the gargoyle. Two breaths, then get out. So after the second one, he's going to slam the ground. If he's not dead already, get away from him. Let him finish having his fit unless you're killing him from range. There's one more up here, as you can see to the right-hand side after you beat these ads down. There's another gargoyle on the top right-hand side. You can pull them both together, but it's extremely risky. You want to make sure that everybody's got their ultimates or you've got a lot of damage in your group if you want to try and perform in that manner. But to keep it safe and simple, just pull one at a time. You don't have to have them both together. Again, the same rules apply. Two breaths, then he slams. But if you've got very high damage, of course, you may never see the slam itself. Finish off the ads to make sure that no catapults are active anymore. And of course to get your points, because you do get points per kill for this. And then we will be moving into the next room. Now the next room is the boss. Now what did I tell you at the very beginning of this trial? Make sure you interrupt the flame shapers. That is crucial for this fight. Before we get to that boss, however, there is one more ad pull. It's loads of these little guys again, but there is a bigger target in there. There's a destroyer and his little mate. They are not really that problematic, but if you do get the spread and AoE from the destroyer on you, just relax, stand still, and don't run into the group with it if you can help it. And if the destroyer tries to use his nasty uh, spin attack or cone attack, then just make sure you're not standing in his face. Keep the heals coming. The tank should turn everything away and you should be just fine. The priest himself is not that much of a problem. He just has nasty heavy attacks that knock you down. They don't do a lot of damage. So again, if you are a DPS or a healer and it tries to hit you, all you need to do is block. Don't panic. Don't run around the room like a headless chicken. Just stick to the mechanics and you'll be just fine. There are a lot of bosses in the game and a lot of ads that if you try and block their heavy attacks, they'll kill you. These ones will not. They don't hit that hard. It's just an inconvenience when you get pinged across the room. This boss is a pain if you don't follow mechanics as you can see it's just one target and you have to be on him to get him down but there are other mechanics whenever he does a pulsar he will do a big spread in the aoe as you can see there you must block that do not dodge roll it even if you think you're out of it it will kill you block it when he does his flame shaper you have to interrupt and now you can see four shades well actually three and him the one with the health bar is him the other three are fake now what you want to do is assign your group one, two, three, and four from left to right. And make sure that those people focus on their target with interrupts at all times every time he does that mechanic. You see him put his hand in the air with the flame, just like a flame shaper. When any of those ads do that, interrupt them. They're immune to damage, but once you've interrupted them, they will disappear once they've done their job. They will do pulsars just like he does, and they will do the flame shaper attack just like he does as well, so you must focus on that at all times. Do not get panicked. Do not start thinking you have to burn the boss down and ignore the mechanics because it won't work. You'll wipe the group. One, two, three, and four from left to right. Also have someone calling out which number he is so everyone knows where to apply their damage while interrupting stuff. Now, one more key point to this. There are meteors coming down from the sky. You can see them occasionally. I think I have to deal with one myself in a moment. This is why you stay spread out. You'll notice we are not stacking. Do not stack. Stay on the interrupts. Block that pulsar. And if you get a meteor on your head, you must block it, then move out of it while blocking, and then you're safe. Or block it and then move out of it with a dodge roll, and then you're safe. There's a meteor to our right there. If you try and dodge it while it's incoming, it will stun you you will die. You must block. This is one of those fights where if you think you can dodge roll to get away of it, you can't. You will end up dead. Now, this is rinse repeat for the whole part of it. Over and over and over. Add spawn in, interrupt the flame shapers as they do their magic, then nuke the boss. Block the meteor, block the pulsar. Don't dodge roll away from stuff unless it's already been blocked and it's finished with, because the meteors will leave fire on the ground for a couple of seconds. Do not stack. Now, when the health is obviously low, the boss is going to die a lot quicker because there's not much left. This is when people get lazy. Block that. This is when people get really, really complacent and start ignoring the interrupts. Do not do that. One, two, three, and four, your assigned positions. Make sure you keep an eye on your target. As soon as he's done his interrupt mechanic and it's finished with, that's when you can move on and keep an eye on the rest. As you can see here, he moves around a lot. He's always in a different place if you're unlucky. 
um, but you must, as you can see, our tank over there interrupting, and another person interrupting with Prussian Shop for another ad. Once they've done their rotation as such and been stopped, they will go away. Now, this is basically execute, but if he does run into the middle, be very, very aware that if you try and nuke him when you find out which one is him, you could do one of two things. You could finish him really quickly, or you could actually die from not paying attention to the mechanics on the other ads. Just because he's very low health doesn't mean the Flame Shaper mechanic can't nuke you. Always follow the mechanics. So interrupts, blocks, and spread out. So we had a couple of disconnects on the other side. Luckily, the fight was over, so it doesn't count as a loss. Um, but now, both gates can be opened. Once both bosses are dead, both gates can be opened. You can't open any one or the other if both aren't dead. So, now we're going to run up to the, where the horn is. There is an achievement for this. I won't go too, into, too much into it, but if you press that, there is an achievement. Make sure your group agree with it first, otherwise you will get in trouble for that. Now... We have to kill this one war priest. I would recommend using this to build ultimate. When it comes to the two bosses that you just saw, you can deliberately not use ultimate to execute, so you've already got them ready. Failing that, you can build it up on this guy. The reason I say for you to build your ultimate, or even save it on the boss and just passively execute it, is because the next ad pull is enormous. Absolutely insane. Lots and lots of damage is required. Um, for you to make it happen really quickly. Failing that, lots of coordination is required to make sure you don't get nuked. So, there's two ways to do this. You can get the tanks to pull the gargoyles to one side and deal with all the adds in the middle, or you can take them all at once. Now, what we've decided to do is grab the two gargoyles and face them against the stairs while putting as many ultimates down as possible to get them down passively together. Remember their mechanics, however. Two breaths from either gargoyle, and one of them's going to start slamming the ground. If both of them do two breaths, both of them are going to be slamming the ground. So you want to kill these fast. If you can't manage that in your group, that's not a problem. But just make sure that you take them away from this big cluster of adds and deal with them separately after everything else is dead. In the meantime, the tanks need to control the destroyers and the war priests because they will heavy attack the group and knock them down. So keep them pinned under the gargoyle if you can help it. And as you can see, there are also flame shapers. Where the tanks were positioned, they can normally interrupt these, but there is one to the right that's a little bit sneaky, and you want to make sure that your DPS are paying attention to him. Failing that, of course, make sure that you've got some long-range interrupts like Crush and Shock or Venom Arrow in order to knock these uh, out of sync every time they put their hand in the air. Focus the Flame Shapers overall after the Gargoyles are down if you're doing this method, but if you are doing the gargoyles out of the group method, again, still focus the flame shapers first and finish the gargoyles after everything else is dead. Very, very simple, but can go horribly wrong. Keep your heels up, and if you are the raid leader and you've got plenty of staminas, time when you call for vigors. They can be very, very beneficial. Now, this hard mode is where you really test the coordination of your team. Can your team stand in a straight line without anyone nipping to the left or the right a little bit, just to be a bit awkward? If they can't, you need to practice. You need to be able to stay in a perfectly straight line, otherwise you are going to give yourself a headache and make more mechanics happen than necessary. So, we're going to activate hard mode, of course. We're going to break the statues, which you'll see either side of the room. And once they're broken, the warrior will... Be a little bit annoyed and introduce some new mechanics into the room if you haven't seen this before don't worry it's not as scary as you think when you do it off hard mode and when you do actual hard mode it can be very straightforward once you've had a bit of practice now there are several gargoyles around the room on the floor on corners of the room and all that kind of stuff what we want to do is we want to line up so we have two in a straight line one at the front and one at the back we want our main tank to aim the warrior at us the reason you want to aim at us is because he throws a shield. That shield will kill the group. If you don't get out of it. But it will aim at a random player. So if we're all in a straight line, it could aim at any of us. And it's guaranteed to be in a straight line. When the tank is facing us, that means that even if he aims at the tank, it's still going to come this direction. The reason you stay in a perfectly straight line on top of that is because the gargoyles that are in stone can be smashed with the shield if you don't break the gargoyles in due time they will start waking up and they have the same mechanics as the other gargoyles in the trial except they're beefier 
they have a lot more health and they hit a lot harder and they are a real real problem now i know lots of people like to take them to the back of the room we're not going to show any cheesy methods we're going to show you how to do it straightforward and properly now as you can see these are the gargles around the room you have to kind of find a way that works for you you don't necessarily have to copy us a way that works for you that gives you a good route around the room for both maneuverability of your group getting from one place to another at, the, at due time and in, in a decent amount of time before the the next mechanics come in before he throws a shield and of course you want the tank to be comfortable enough to position the boss as and when the way that we've done it is we've deliberately made it so that we get rid of the healing circle section quite quickly and he doesn't get to stand in it, so he's not that much of a problem. And we've also made it so that the damage circle also doesn't become a problem because he doesn't stand in that either. But you'll see that as we go through the fight. Now, if that doesn't make any sense, there's a yellow circle on the left and there's a blue circle on the right. The yellow circle will give a healing bonus or a health recovery bonus to anyone standing in it, including the boss and the ads. And the blue circle will give a damage bonus to anyone standing in it, including the boss and the ads. Now, one more thing to remember, the boss will periodically turn someone into stone. When that happens, they will be presented with a synergy, which prompts them to break free. Do not break free unless your raid leader tells you, because it will kill your group. Everyone will die to a one-shot. So don't take any synergies in this fight. The most important thing, however, is that the shield doesn't only smash the gargoyles, but it also smashes the person who is in stone. It doesn't damage them, it just breaks them out. So that's how you get out of it if you don't break free. Taking synergies will kill you because they will overlap. Note, by the way, the way the tank is positioning the boss. We're not standing too close because he is facing us and you don't want the flurry. There's the shield. Get out. Move to the next location. Now, this one's a bit clustered. There are some adds here, so the off tank needs to pull them in. The boss should be aimed at us and the ad should be in the middle. This is where you want to nuke the ads as fast as you can. If you can't kill them right out, don't worry, but get as much damage on them as possible while staying in a straight line. Remember, do not take synergies. If you're very advanced, you can probably time this and you can do it very well by taking synergies. But it's a massive, massive risk. And if you are experienced already, of course, you probably aren't watching this video. Now, again, shield throw breaks two gargoyles. Finish the ads if you can. You've got a few seconds before he throws his next shield. Don't stay there for too long. If it feels like you're there for too long, get back to the next position with your group and just deal with it from range. Again, do not hug the front gargoyle. He is aiming at you. You will get flurried in the face. Again, straight line between the two gargoyles. Very simple. Doesn't matter if you're at the front or the back. As long as it's straight, he'll throw the shield and they'll smash. You must get out. This is the damage um, circle. This is where the tank has to be very, very fast. Position the boss quickly. And as you can see now, the boss is not in the damage circle, but we are. So you can do loads and loads of damage here if you're lucky. There's not much time here, but if you can position yourself, if you can place ranged ultimates and all that good stuff, get out of the shield, then this can actually help you. Now, we're going across the damage shield to the last two gargoyles here before we go to the back. The boss does run across the damage uh, section, but as you can see, again, our tank has positioned him in such a way that he's actually outside the edge of it, so he won't nuke the tank. Straight line again. One person is in stone, as you can see. You can see underneath my feet. They are going to get broken out by the shield. As soon as they do, we're going to run to the back of the room. Based on time, and we've killed every single stack of two gargoyles so far, which means one gargoyle now will wake up. Now... The tank needs to hold that at the back of our straight line. Also, you'll notice that there are now flame shapers in the room. The ads have started to wake up. So we had the first ones at the second pull, which were the destroyers. And now we've got flame shapers. Anyone that has got ranged interrupts needs to hit these to stop them doing their nasty flame attacks. Do not run over and bash them. Because if you do, you will leave the line, which means it won't be a straight shield throw. And it will be awkward and possibly miss the gargoyle. So stay in line. Range interrupt them while killing the gargoyle. If you are advanced, you can, of course, stack the gargoyle on the boss and it's win-win. They both take damage. But for safety's sake, keep it to one side. Do as much damage as you can and try to stay in a straight line. Do not deviate left or right because you will mess up that gargoyle and you could miss him, which means you have to kill another one because he will wake up afterwards. Every shield throw that you miss could wake up another gargoyle. So be very, very careful. Now, once they're dead, you want to go into the middle of the room. All the DPS need to stay in a straight line between the boss and the damage circle, especially the range because they can take advantage of it. And everybody else, so the, the other two tanks, should be manipulating adds and controlling the boss. As you can see, Fire is manipulating the adds there, while Miles is tanking the boss and holding him still. Now, you must be in a straight line here. As you saw, he threw his shield again in a straight line. 
This is very important because if you are in stone or one of your team members are in stone and you stack in a straight line with them in it, he will break them out. As you can see to the right there, uh, right now, Richard is in stone. There's nothing we can do. We've got two options. We can stack on him and the shield will break him out or we can all move to one side and tell him to break free. Those are your two options. Now, this is why, again, we stay in a perfectly straight line. Do not move. If you have to go forwards or backwards, that's fine, but do not go left or right. Every time he faces the group, he's going to throw a shield. The adds that come in will be controlled by the tank, but you will still need to interrupt them. So long range interrupts are key if the tank can't reach them. One more thing to note, he will smash the healing circle, which he's already done, and he will smash the damage circle. When that happens, he will do a jump. When the circle appears on your group, you need to make sure you dodge roll out of it and then just get back into position. Now he's going to smash that. He would normally jump on us, but we're not far enough away. Get out of the shield throw. Get back in. Rinse, repeat. Get out, get in. Get out, get in. Straight line. Anyone in stone, straight line between them and the boss. Now, two more things to consider. We now have destroyer ads, which the group needs to deal with. So the tank needs to put them on the boss so we can burn them down keep the interrupts coming with the flame shapers and stay together as a group as you can see here we're standing on the one who's in stone that shield eventually once the boss gets comfortable because he's gone a little bit wild there was a little bit of scatter in there will throw in our direction the other part apart from the ads is your positioning at range do not go too far away from the boss he has ranged attacks and his range attack there's the shield get out is in the form of a jump if you are too far away, he will leave his position and jump on the head of the person who's too far away. That is two things. One, annoying because you lose damage on the boss. And two, a clear sign that someone in your group is not paying attention. If someone gets jumped at while you're supposed to be staying in a straight line, they are in the wrong place. Now, the ads are gone for now. There's a few more to come. There's nothing else to do except stay in a straight line, don't take synergies, and every time he does a shield throw, get out of the way. Discipline is key here. Straight line, get out, get back in again. Straight line, get out, get back in again. Don't panic when the ads come. The tank will deal with them and pull them in onto the boss. Now, there's one more phase here which does get really, really tricky. And this is where I'm going to show you a tactic or explain a tactic that works very, very effectively if your group can coordinate. And that is to consider the position we're in right now in the room. Yes, we're in a straight line. But from my perspective, we'll call this section here the middle. We'll call the left of the pad the left. And we'll call the right of the pad the right, which is where I just now stood at. Now, this is very important. At 35% health, you no longer want to stack. He's going to blow up the room and then he's going to add a new mechanic. You want people split up. Some on the left, some on the right, some in the middle but still quite close. He will still do a shield throw, but he'll have a different animation for it. You will all need to get out of that and then get back to your position. He will do another ability, which is a cleave straight after. And you do not want to get caught by that. So stay back until you see it visually. And then he'll have a nasty, nasty magic rain of damage that will just nuke the group, which is why you must be separated. Everyone must be apart when that happens and you must heal and block. Now the reason we've gone left, right and middle is not just to have a soft stack for this mechanic. You can take synergies here unless you're in stone by the way. Not when it's finished. But it's also to position yourselves when people get turned to stone. As you can see fire just now got broken free by that shield throw type mechanic. But straight after there's always a cleave so be very very careful. There's the cleave, get in, do your damage. Now left, right and middle as you can see someone on the right has got turned to stone. So I would call everyone on the right, get out the way. They can now break free. Then get back to your position. Everybody's happy. The same will repeat throughout the entire fight. Every single time this happens, do not overlap. Heal, shield, survive. When he's finished, he will do a ground slam. Get out of it. When he's finished that, stay away because he's going to do a cleave. Once the cleave is over, get in, start smacking him again. Really, really simple stuff. Again, spread out, heal, shield, don't dance. Here comes the ground slam or shield throw. Get out of it. Wait for the cleave. Then get back in. Now, left side is stoned. Right side is stoned. 
everybody get away from those two sides. Those two people can then break free, and then everyone goes back to their original positions. So what I tend to do is I will call which side has someone turned to stone. So if it was Firefly, I would shout left, and the left people would get out of the way. Right, right people would get out of the way. Middle, middle people would get out of the way. Key point, however, is to always resume your position afterwards. Now, as you can see, again, ground slam, big cleave, then go in. Do not go into that center until the cleave is over, otherwise you will die. We had to move away, someone break free, someone ran into that rip, back into position. The only time you should not be in your position is when you're avoiding a slam or a cleave. Again, you can notice that even in this phase, I'm always in the same spot. Always. As long as the person in stone is clear, they can break free. If they're not, do not move. Do not risk it. For the most part, this is now rinse repeat. There is no actual uh, execute enrage as such. There is no DPS race as such. Just keep applying your damage. Stay out of that slam. Stay away from the cleave that is afterwards. And then stay soft stacked so you're spread out when it comes to the nasty magic attack phase, which is now. Now all you have to do is repeat it. Every time he finishes, here's the slam. Every time he finishes that, here's the cleave. Every time that's done, get back in position. Whoever's in stone needs to put a hello up. It helps actually. Everybody move away. Let them blow up. And then everybody go back again. When you fully understand how to coordinate in that manner, it's a piece of cake. If not, it can be a complete cluster. So don't run around in circles. Positioning is always key in this fight. It can go really, really quickly or it can go really, really long. But as long as you coordinate, you will be just fine. This now, for the rest of the fight, does not change. If it's got 5 million health left and he does his kind of starfall ability with all the, the shiny magic damage coming in, don't risk it. Get in position, heal, shield. Just go through another lap. It's absolutely fine. Now, just note, by the way, non-hard mode has no gargoyles. No turning into stone. None of that. So just stay in a straight line. Take as many synergies as you want. And just keep hitting him until he dies. But you do get the 35% phase. You've got to be very, very careful. So, hopefully that helped. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. Hopefully it wasn't too complicated. Hopefully the demonstration was clear enough for you to understand how you can approach the mechanics. Just make sure you've got plenty of heals, plenty of survivability, and you'll be just fine. Follow the mechanics to the death. Don't panic just because the health is low. It's not over yet. Now, there are going to be some more of these, of course. This is a series. They are done in order. These are currently the Craglon Trials. We've done AA, we've done Hellra, and next up, of course, is Sanctum Orphidia. Then you get to see some of the shinier stuff, if that's what you've been waiting for. So patience is a virtue, of course, but they are coming. So, first of all, thank you all very much for watching. I hugely appreciate your support. And if you are not subscribing already, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support outside of the channel, there are some links in the description for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and, of course, the website, zynogaming.com, where all the written guides are for the trials, the dungeons, the builds, the lot. Also, I do live stream on Twitch every day unless I say otherwise on Twitter at 10 p.m. UK time. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.